All right. Good morning. Good morning. Fusion Church, 6 a.m. So, so glad to be here, guys. Sorry for a little bit of delay. Had some difficulties, but it's squared away. We're ready to go. All right. This morning, we are in 1 Chronicles 12. 1 Chronicles 12. Uh, so talking about um, David and his mighty men and things that they were going through. Um, hey, listen, if you have forgotten... I don't know what's wrong with you, but this weekend we have our friends and family um, weekend coming up. Friends and family, we have trunk or treat. We got baptisms. Um, I, I know that um, <clears throat> EHG all got a ton of baptisms in your service. Cumberland County, we have baptisms and we have room for more. So, hey, listen, fam, I told Cumberland County this past weekend, if you need to be baptized, know someone who is wanting to be baptized or need, know someone who needs to be baptized. You take them by the hand, you bring them to church, right? Bring them to Cumberland County, bring them to EHT. And we were going to get them um, following these next steps on their walk with Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. We got bounce houses, tons of candy, way too much candy. Um, we're going to have an amazing, amazing time. And Pastor Brennan is starting a brand new series and it's, it's going to be phenomenal. All right. So, whew. Let's pray and let's get into it. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, Lord, Lord, this privilege to, to, to wake up on a peaceful morning and dig into your word, Lord God. I pray for, for each and every one of us who are on this call this morning, Lord God, that you would just, it'll be you speaking to us, Father. I pray for your words that are heard this morning and not mine, that I would fade to the background, but, but you and your word, your son, Jesus Christ will be at the forefront. So thank you, Lord for this opportunity. We praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. First Chronicles 12, and I am reading from the New King James Version. These were the men who came to D David at Ziklag. While he was banished from the presence of Saul, son of Kish, they were among the warriors who helped him in battle. They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones, right-handed or left-handed. They were relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Ahiazar, their chief, and Joash, the son of Shammah, the Gibeathite, Jeziel and Pelet, the sons of Asmavath, and Barakah, and Jehu, the Anathite, Ishmai, the Gibeonite, a mighty warrior among the thirty, who was a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehazael, Johanan, Josabad, the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Bela, Shemari, and Shephatiah, the Harophite, Elkanah, Ishaya, Azrael, Joer, Joshabim, the Gorahite, and Jola, Zebediah, the sons of Jerome from Gedor. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors, ready for battle, and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles in the mountains. Azor the, the, was the chief, Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh. Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbanai the eleventh. These Gadites were army commanders. The least was a match for a hundred, and the greatest for a thousand. It was they who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks, and they put to flight everyone living in the valley to the east and to the west. Other Benjamites and some men from Judah also came to David in his stronghold. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in peace to help me, I am ready for you to join me. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when my hands are free from violence, may the God of our ancestors see it and judge you. Then the spirit came on Amasiah, the chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are with you, son of Jesse. Success, success to you, and success to those who help you, for your God will help you. So David received them and made them leaders of his raiding bands. Some of the tribe of Manasseh defected to David when he, he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. He and his men did not help the Philistines because after consultation, the ruler sent him away. They said, it will cost us our heads if we, he deserts to his master Saul. When David went to Ziklag, these were the men of Manasseh who defected to him. Adna, Josabad, Jediel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, Zilathai, leaders of the units of a thousand in Manasseh. They helped David against raiding bands for all of the, them were brave warriors. And they were commanders in his army. Day after day, men came to help David until he had a great army, like the army of God. Verse 23. 
These were the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said, from Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. From Simeon, warriors ready for battle, 7,100. From Levi, 4,600, including Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, with 3,700 men. And Zadok, a brave young warrior with 22 officers from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's tribe, 3,000, most of whom had remained loyal to Saul's house until then. From Ephraim, brave warriors famous in their own clans, 20,800. From half the tribe of Manasseh, designated by name to come and make David king, 18,000. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. From Zebulun, experienced soldiers prepared for battle with every type of weapon to help David with undivided loyalty, 50,000. From Naphtali, 1,000 officers gathered uh, together with 37,000 men carrying shields and spears. From Dan, ready for battle, 28,600. From Asher, experienced soldiers prepared for battle, 40,000. And from the from east of the Jordan, from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, armed with every type of weapon, 120,000. All these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron, fully determined to make David king over all Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days, three days there with David, eating and drinking, for their families had supplied provisions for them. Also, their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali came bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, olive oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was joy in Israel. Amen. Amen. All right. So we can read a passage of scripture like this and be like, oh, man, Pastor Jason, names. We got names upon names. We have numbers. This doesn't make any sense. I could care less about what's what's go <laughs> what was going on. I don't care about these these men that we're talking about. Um, but it's important. Everything in the Bible is important. It shows it, we're at a point in in the life of David where you know we just finished um, you know First and Second Samuel, really chron chronicling the life of David. And Chronicles kind of goes back and reiterates a lot of the same things. Um, and, and so why does it do that? Well, the, we, it's showing emphasis. Anytime the Bible repeats itself, it's showing emphasis. We need to be paying attention about what's going on, you know. So um, it begins with talking about when David was at Ziklag. And David's time at Ziklag is, is described further in 1 Samuel 27 and 1 Samuel 30. Um, this was a time when David was living in the territory of the Philipp Philistines Excuse me, to escape king david he was uh, king saul he was running from saul at this time and it talks about how there were there were among the mighty men helpers in the war verse two says they were armed with bows using both right hand and left hand during david's time in ziklag um certain mighty warriors came and expressed their allegiance to david and his cause this was especially remarkable be, because um, some of them were were of the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin is the tribe that that King Saul came from. So in essence, even some of Saul's own family members were at this time defecting to David, you know, and and um, and these guys, they didn't have to do that. They it would have been they they had much more to gain if they had stuck with their brother Saul. Their brethren, their 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 tribesmen, you know, their family member, their cousin, Saul it would have been much better if they just kept kept supporting him and and hoped and prayed that you know he remained king. Yet they chose David over Saul because they knew that God was with David. They knew that God was supporting David. They knew that God was was, was the one who 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 uh, that David was the one that God had chosen. So they sided with David, and, and it talks about um, being able to fight with the right hand and the left hand. Judges 13, uh, excuse me, 3, verse 15, and, and Judges 20, verse 16, they make special reference to, to left-handed warriors. In other words, these warriors were so, these guys, these guys were so bad, right, that they, it didn't matter what hand they, they had, they could fight with both. You know, they were ambidextrous, right? That's a skill. 
You know, I could tell you right now, being in the military, you know, I'm shooting with one hand, okay? And the times when we had to train to shoot with your opposite hand, you pass it didn't do too well, you know, because I, I, I don't got it like that, you know? And so these guys were able to um to 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 do this and so that that show they had extra skill um and perhaps they trained to be so skillful right and so um verse four says a mighty man among the 30 over and over the 30 um as mentioned in in previous chapters david's army seemed to be organized in groups of 30 right and they had leaders over each of the 30 very much like how the roman soldiers they would have centurions a one man over a hundred you know a uh, hundred men and so david divided his men amongst uh, amongst 30 and talks about in verse 8 um these gadites and how verse 8 says they were mighty men of val valor men trained for battle who could handle shield and spear whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains these gadites who showed up they were impressive right these guys had some skill these were like the elite of the elite these were the special forces you know of israel's army that were coming to support david while he was in the, Ill, in the wilderness it says they were mighty men of valor they were men of courage they had a warrior spirit they were trained for battle. They, they were men who, who had received training. They had patiently been trained um, to receive all the training they needed to be these warriors. All right. They didn't just, just, just grab the, the blacksmith and the baker, you know, and say like, hey, man, you, you know, hey, go, go, go pick up that spear. You know, let's, let's go fight. No, these guys were trained for battle. They could handle shield and spear. They were they were men who were skilled in the use of, of both offensive and defensive weapons. It says whose faces were like the faces of lions. They had a calm demeanor. All right. Think of a lion. When when you see a lion, you, know, you, you watch, you know, National Geographic or whatever, you know, a lion isn't always this ferocious thing. Sometimes they're 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 calm. And they're just they're just sitting in, in the in the wilderness, they're just sitting in the grass, right? And they look peaceful, but you know at a moment's notice, they will pounce, they will attack. That's what these men were. They were calm, they had a calm demeanor, they were confident in God. When you have confidence in your God, you don't have to be hooping and hollering, you don't have to be yelling and screaming, you don't have to prove who you are because you have God behind you. So why do you have to show out and act crazy? You don't, you don't. You can walk around with a calm demeanor knowing that you have the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ on your side, amen? And that is more powerful than having to show off and, and try to make people believe you're something when you're really not. They had, you know, against they, they had the countenance of fierce warriors, of calm warriors. It says they were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. They were mobile, active men, ready to fight where they were needed. These were the elite of the elite, brothers and sisters. And they chose to go side with David versus King Saul, right? And that says a lot about, about who David was because they could have easily gone with, with, with Saul, right? And been in uh, part of his army, you know, Saul's the king. So he had the money, he had everything. But no, they decided to go into the wilderness in the middle of nowhere, the, the back countries uh, of, of Ziklag to join up with David. Why? Because they knew David was the, was, was the anointed one, that God had chosen David to be king. And so they wanted to be in, under the grace of God. They wanted to be obedient to God. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how, how well off you think you are, right? How much Bible knowledge you have, how holy and spiritual you think you are. God may have you in a place of prominence right now, but he may want to send you into the wilderness for a little bit, right? Because no doubt some of these guys may have, may have been questioning. We often question the will of God, right? Am I the only one? I guess I'm the only one who sometimes questions what God says. Who sometimes like, God, are you sure about that? Are you sure you're sure? You know, but they were obedient and we have to be obedient, right? Because there's always more refinement for us. There's always more that we can learn, right? You know, so these may have been mighty warriors, right? 
prepared for battle, ready to fight, but maybe God still had some refinement for them. Maybe God still has some refinement for you and you're finding yourself in a wilderness situation right now. And God's saying, trust me, trust me. I got your back. Trust me. You're never, you're not there yet. And listen, none of us are going to be there until we're in glory with our savior. Amen. We always got room to grow. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you if you you've been a saint for a saint for 50 years, 100 years. I don't care if you wrote the Bible next to Jesus. You are not Jesus and so we always have room for improvement. You know, Doug, I know you're close to there but you're not there yet, you know what I'm saying? We we always have room for improvement. And it says, uh, Charles Spurgeon, he writes when he's talking about these, these mighty men, he says, the grace of God can make us like them. Listen, the grace of God can make us like these men. The grace of God can make us um, uh, 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 leave as lions so that wherever we are, we can hold our own or rather can hold our, our Lord's truth and never blush nor be ashamed to speak a good word for him at all times. He can make us quick and active. The Lord can make us like these men. Right. And it's something we should be striving for. So we can walk around boldly proclaiming the word of God, boldly standing up for, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to our friends and to our family. And maybe some of you guys need that boldness to be inviting people to friends and family this weekend. I'm sure there are some of us on this call right now, those of us listening later on, that there's people on your heart that you've been praying for. Right. And you've been you've been kind of timid about uh, sharing your faith in Jesus Christ. You've been a little bit scared about inviting them to church. Right. And I'll tell you right now, Fusion Church is the best place they can be. Right. Because we don't go to a church like what I grew up in, where people were doing backflips and handstands and running around and go acting crazy. No, we serve. We, we go to a, a church, a Bible believing, spirit filled church. And like Pastor Brennan said, he ain't going to preach this weekend about tithing. Right. He ain't going to be preaching about what you can do. No, you know, he's got a, he's got an on time word for for people who are truly lost. Right. You know, reaching those who are far from Jesus. So pray to God that he will give you the strength and the boldness like these men of Gad so that you can you can be swift as a gazelle. You can be strong as a lion and proclaim boldly the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says in verse 15 that these are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it had overflowed all its banks. As, as an example of the might and the strength of these men, the, the, the writer of Chronicles uh, records how these brave men, uh, they, they crossed the Jordan at a very dangerous time. The Jordan was at its highest. It was at its deepest. And this shows an, a, an amazing example of strong devotion. You know, when, when they wanted to join David, they were they were living on, on, on the other side of the Jordan River. And Jordan was at its deepest. At that season of the year, the banks were overflowing. It was extremely deep. It was extremely broad river. But they would not let that keep them from joining David. It would not let them, um, it would not stop them from fulfilling what they believe God wanted them to do. So they swam across the river so they could join David. And it says, then David went out there to meet them. This shows that David's heart um, and it showed his trust in God because he received these soldiers, even though he had reason to be suspicious, right? Because these were, again, these were the sons of Benjamin. These were, you know, the tribesmen of his enemy, King Saul, you know, but he asked God for wisdom and God gave him the wisdom to know that, no, these are, I'm, God was saying, I'm sending these men to you, you know, on the outward appearance, they may not seem like, like you can trust them, but I'm telling you, I'm sending them. You can trust them. Verse 18, it says, then the spirit came upon Amasai. This literally means that the spirit he clothed Amasai. And this 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 um this old testament phrase of the, the, the spirit coming upon someone is only used two other times um in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Judges 6:34 and in um 2 Chronicles 24, 20. On Judges 6:34, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. The second Chronicles 24, 20, it says the spirit of God came upon Zechariah. So this is significant. It's only used a few times, you know, and, and, and Jesus may have had this same phrase in mind 
when you know when when he promised his followers that they would be clothed on with power from on high in Luke 24 verse 49 you know, it's the idea of the Holy Spirit coming upon us, wrap, enveloping us, wrapping us around, you know, think of a blanket when we're cold, right? When we're cold and we're, 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 we're freezing, you know, you take that blanket and you wrap it up around your shoulders, over your head like a hood, you know, and what happens? Your warmth, you know, you feel, you feel the warmth of the blanket and you feel better. That's how the Spirit of God wants to envelop us, brothers and sisters. Think about it like that. He wants to wrap us up in his arms, right? And, and we have that same promise, right? We don't have to be Gideon or Zechariah or, or my man Amasai. You know, the spirit of God can still wrap his arms around us, brothers and sisters. You know, so 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 th when, you, when you think about, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming upon us, you know, envision that. Envision, you know, wrapping yourself in a blanket. That's the Holy Spirit covering you. When it talks about this guy, Amasai, um, he may be identified with Amasa. And Amasa was Absalom's commander, who um, David later re uh, reinstated after the whole Absalom situation in 2 Samuel 19, 13, you know. So again, that, you know, so that this, so this is, you know, maybe the same guy, you know, that later on, and, you know, is going to be part, part Absalom and, and is going to betray David, but then David reinstates him as his commander. And he continues on and goes, says, for your God helps you. Whatever... The sons of Benjamin knew about David. They knew that God helped David. And this made them want to follow him. It's as, as if they were saying, we've seen God's singular and gracious care for you. We've seen God provide to you, you know, his kindness to you. And if we go against you, we'd be fighting against God. We'd be fighting against his word. We'd be fighting against his doctrine. We'd be fighting against what he has commanded, and we ain't going to do that. Brothers and sisters, you never want to find yourself in a position where you're going against God and his word. You never want to be in a position where you're disobeying God and his word. And it's easy for us to do that. These mighty men, these men from Gad, they could have been there. They could have said, no, listen, we got it going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're we're we're, we're the... We're SEAL Team Six. We Delta Force. We we don't we could do whatever we want. We can go join Saul and get the best of the best, you know. But if we do that, we're going against the will of God. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I refuse to go against the will of God. I refuse to go against the will of God. How much better to find yourself standing in the will of God? It's like that river Jordan that was overflowing, you know, you find yourself standing in the middle of the river and his will, his power, his glory, is just enveloping you. You have nothing to fear. These men did not want to go against the will of God. They wanted to remain in God's mercy. Right. And so verse 22, it says, until it was a great army, like the army of God under, under the hand of God and his servant, David. These mighty men who began as 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 uh, uh, disaffected, disjointed, just random people um, with nowhere else to go. Um, according to First Samuel twenty two, they developed into an amazing force. They developed into it into a legit army. David and his mighty men needed each other and were each nothing without the other. God brought them together, and that's how it works sometimes. God can bring some of the most random folks together to do his will. Look at your look at your, your the teams that you serve on. Look at some of the connect groups you're a part of, right? You know, sometimes, you know, I look at some of our teams and like I don't know how God brought this crazy group of people together. Right? You know, come to Cumberland County, you're going to see some crazies. I got some Cumberland County people here, so so I ain't going to say, you know, Pop is number, listen, Pop's the ringleader. You got to watch out for that guy, you know, but it's such an eclectic group of people that on the outside, you know, we may never meet, we may never be friends, you know, but we're together and we're doing life together. We are serving the kingdom of God together, right? And that was happening here. 
These men on their own would not have been able to do anything, but together under the will of God, they were able to do amazing things. Verse 26 of the sons of Levi, 4,600. So some people think that the Levites um, were prohibited, prohibited from going to war, right? And it's not specifically stated when you read the text in, in the book of Numbers, um, chapter one, verse 47, it, um, to, to 47 to 53, it says that that um, in that census, they were not to be counted among other tribes when it, when it dealt with the men going to war, but it does not say they could never fight for Israel. OK, so, so sometimes a little bit, a little bit of a um, you need some clarity on that. The tribe of Levi, yes, they were they were the ones like the, and specifically. So we know that specifically the sons of Aaron, under the tribe of Levi, Levi, they were the priests of Israel, right? But um, the tribe of Levi wasn't just the sons of Aaron, right? So there's a whole bunch of people in, in, in the Levites, and so the Levites were also called, yes, to 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 serve in the the tabernacle and and provide guard and security around the tabernacle. But then there were some that, yeah, we're going to go to war, we're going to fight. Um, uh, the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. All right. Um, we should look at these sons of Issachar, but they were men who, who up, up until this point, they supported King Saul, right? Up, up until the right time. And at the right time, they gave their support to, to David. These sons of Issachar, they supported Saul while he lived, knowing that the time had not yet come for David take possession of the kingdom. So these guys are just being obedient. Saul was the king. Just as David, even though he was he was at war with Saul, he still recognized Saul as the king because he knew his time had not come. And these sons of Issachar, they were wise enough to also see that. Verse 33, stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. The idea behind the word stout-hearted, that's a word we don't use today, right? I've never heard stout-hearted until, you know, you read the, this passage of scripture. You know, these men were of a single mind. They were wholehearted in their in their devotion to David. And, and this is reflected in, in various translation of the same passage, all right? So if we read this in the King James Version, it says, they were not of double heart. The New International Version says, to help David with undivided loyalty. The New American Standard Bible says, help David with an undivided heart. And the New Living Translation, completely loyal to David, right? So stout-hearted, these men were loyal. They were undivided. They were focused on serving David. And this verse tells us that the men of Zebulon, they weren't double-hearted warriors because the double-minded man, he's unstable. In all of his ways, unstable in all of his ways, and he's not to be relied upon, right? If you have a leader who doesn't know what they're doing, they're going back and forth, they're confused, they don't know what to do, right? They're not to be followed. But if you have a leader who is focused on the will of God, who knows what the Lord has told him to do, and is going to keep doing it until the Lord tells him otherwise, that's the person you need to follow. Right, these men they, they were they were completely loyal to their king. They could keep ranks. That's they 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 stayed in tight formations even in the heart of battle. And their single devotion to their king made them able to stay together as a single unit. All right, too many like, like too too many people like to break ranks and do God's work independently. Listen, if we have division within the church, division within your teams, divisions within your ministry divisions within your connect group if there is division happening right that's not of god we serve a god of unity and too many people when the going gets tough when there's things they may or may not agree with when they're they're you know when, when they don't they, they suddenly don't like a leader or they don't like a pastor or they don't like an elder they you know then they want to break ranks and and they think that i can do this better on my own i can go off and do my own thing listen that is not of god that is sowing disunity that is sowing division amongst the people of god right and be very very cautious about following these types of people be very very cautious because they will and 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 um not intentionally but they will lead you astray and they're going to lead you away from God. 50 men, 50 women, 50 people who act together can do greater than 500 people acting apart. Because if we're acting together, brothers and sisters, we're going to be okay. 
We're, act, we're, we're working together to, to serve the kingdom of God. We're working together to do our outreaches. We're working together to do whatever God has placed upon us, right? We're going to be so much more successful. But if you have, you know, 50 chiefs, ain't going to work out because everyone, everyone thinks they know better, right? It's not safe. It's dangerous. It is dangerous dangerous and let me get even let me get even more real to you that is the enemy that is causing division that is the enemy that is causing us not to look to god but to look to man and when we look to god we have nothing to fear but when we look to man and what we think man can do and how man makes us feel and how how man you know uh puffs up our ego and man, no, eventually they're going to let you down if you look to Pastor Brandon or any of the other pastors on staff, you look to our elders, right? And you say, uh, you just look to them, we're going to let you down, right? I am no doubt going to say something that's going to tick you off, right? No doubt. Because if you know me enough, well enough, you know, sometimes some stuff comes out of my mouth. Amen. And I will let you down and I'm sorry, but listen, I'm not God. I'm just doing the best that I can with what God has given me right? The tools and the giftings and the talents he's given me to, to accomplish my part of the mission, right? But ultimately we look to God, look to God, look to God. Let me say it again. Look to God who heard the sermon this weekend, right? The sermon that, that, you know, come on now. And if you haven't go back on YouTube, listen to the message and whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? Because if you're listening to, to, to the voice of God, it's going to get scary. It's going to get bumpy, right? You know, we may get shaken around a little bit. You know, we may even get hurt, but we know we're heading in the right direction. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not yea, though I chill out in the valley of the shadow of death and wallow in my misery. No, God promises to take us by the hand and walk us through the valley of the shadow of death. So who are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? These men were listening to the voice of God, the prompting of the Holy Spirit that said, okay, it's time for you to get up and go to my servant, David. Follow my servant, David, the man after my own heart. Because why? Because this was all part of the, the plan to make David king, right? Verse 38. Make David king over all Israel. This this David was finally made king of Israel over all Israel years after Saul's death. Around seven years after he died, he was finally made king. And it may have come late, but it, it came. Right? It came. God made a promise, and it's going to come to pass. Not on David's timetable, you know, not on anyone else's timetable. When he when David, when God wanted to do because listen, God's God, he can do whatever he wants, right? And so he, he finally became king, and the people of God recognized David as their king. And significantly, David would not have to force this, this upon the people. He didn't have to force his reign on Israel. He was just obedient to God, and the people listened to God. He And, and, and David waited until the people were willing to make him their king. And, it, and, it, and it, it appears very clear that the majority of the tribes of Israel wish to see the kingdom confirmed in the hands of David. There has never been, will never be in any other country, any other time, a man more worthy of public service than David. Never was, never will be again, because David. David, who was told he would be king as a young man, waited like 20 years before he became king. That's a long time to wait, guys. Especially when God spoke through the prophet Samuel and he was anointed king. But then God told him to wait. How many promises have been on your life and God has told you to wait? God's told you to it's not Daughter, it's not time yet. Son, relax. It's coming. It's coming. And then we step out of the will of God and we try to make it happen ourselves. 
we step out of the will of God and we're like, you know what, God, I'm going to help you out. I got your back, God. You know, I'm going to put my two cents. I'm going to make this happen. And that's wrong. And now we're walking in sin. Be like these mighty men who are obedient to God and they follow David. Don't be like others who have left their calling, left where they were at, left where God has placed them to go off on their own, do their own thing. Amen. I'm way past time. I'm about to get in trouble. People are going to start yelling at me. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that all we have to do is continue to look to you, the author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus. We just have to remain in your will, Lord God. And we have the assurance that you're going to be there to protect us, to keep us safe, Lord, to, to, to complete the tasks that you have called us to do, to fulfill the promises that you made. We don't have to worry. We don't have to do our own thing. We don't have to feel like we have to help you out, Lord God, because you're God and you can do all things. So thank you, Father, for your word. I pray for my brothers and sisters as we go about our day, our week, our month, Lord God. Be with us as we, as we as we go into this friends and family weekend, Father, and, and all the, the friends and family and first guests are going to be coming to the doors of our church, Lord God, that, that you will you will give us the strength and the wisdom to appropriately uh, disciple and greet these people as they walk into the doors of our church, Lord God. And Father, it's not about bounce houses or trunk retreat or any of that, Lord God. It's about your son, Jesus Christ, and that his name be glorified. So I pray that that will be that what we continue to do, that his name will be continual on our lips. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We pray, amen, and amen, and amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I love you. Sorry I went a little bit late. Um, I'll see you again next week. God bless.